وصفحك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيح عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطئي وعمدي أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فصرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبطأ عني عتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبطأ عني هو خير لي لعلمك بعاقبة الأمور فلم أر مولا كريما أصبر على عبد لئيم منك علي يا رب إنك تدعوني فأول لي عنك وتتحببوا إلي فتبغضوا إليك وتتوددوا إلي فلا أقبلوا منك كأن لي التطول عليك فلم يمنعك ذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إلي والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجر الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإصباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته 
والحمد لله على طول أناته في غضبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الإصباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يراه وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادله ولا شبيه يشاكله ولا ظهير يعاضده قهر بعزته الأعزاء وتواضع لعظمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصي ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنيئة قد أعطاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبهجة مونقة قد أراني فأثني عليه حامدا وأذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يهتك حجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد سائله ولا يخيب آمله الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله قاصم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبح في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله 
الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وامينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنمى وأطيب وأطهر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على صبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والعدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين وأيده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعله الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبله مكن له دينه الذي ارتضيته له أبدله من بعد خوفه أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم أعزه وأعزز به وانصره وانتصر به 
وانصره نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم أظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخلق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهلك وتذل بها النفاق وأهلك وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم المؤم به شعثنا واشعب به صدعنا وارتق به فتقنا وكثر به قلتنا وأعزز به ذلتنا وأغن به عائلنا واقض به عن مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عسرنا وبيض به وجوهنا وفك به أسرنا وأنجح به طلبتنا وأنجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا وأعطنا به سؤلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة آمالنا وأعطنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسؤولين وأوسع المعطين اشف به صدورنا وأذهب به غيظ قلوبنا واهدنا لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إله الحق آمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقت نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآله وعنا على ذلك بفتح منك تعجله وبضر تكشفه ونصر تعزه وسلطان حق تظهره ورحمة منك تجللنا وعافية منك تلبسنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين
In 2004, CARF was founded on the belief that quality education is a stepping stone towards improving the condition of a society. With this in mind, we set a goal to build an orphan school. In 2004, CARF was founded on the belief that quality education is a stepping stone towards improving the condition of a society. With this in mind, we set a goal to build an orphan school, Al Sadiq Elementary School for orphan students. In 2007, we achieved this goal and started enrolling. Currently, 360 orphans study at Al Sadiq Elementary, receiving a high quality education, transportation, nourishing meals, and emotional and mental support. During the last 17 years, 5,988 orphan students have graduated from al Sadiq School. In 2007, CARF broke ground on a massive expansion to its mission in order to provide another stepping stone for a thriving society. Quality healthcare with a fully equipped and specialized hospital. With widespread donor support, CARF began to lay the organizational and structural framework to build the Imam al hajjah Hospital in Karbala. It took an entire decade to complete this huge project. Hospital doors opened to the public in 2017. To date, nearly 50,000 patients have been served at the al hajjah Hospital free of charge. 33,000 have been treated at reduced fees, and altogether, 200,000 patients have been cared for during the last six years. In assessing the needs of the region, CARF observed that years of wars and the aftermath left countless young orphans, many of them under five years old. In a 2016 fundraising dinner in Dearborn, Michigan, CARF promised to build a preschool for orphans to get them started with the foundational skills and experience to thrive. Later in 2016, Al Sadiq Preschool was opened with warm and kind caretakers to welcome the youngest and most hopeful leaders of the future. Every society is built on and dependent on its mothers. The biggest impact for change starts with educating a young girl. With that in mind, in 2013, CARF promised to build an academy for girls who might not otherwise have the opportunity to further their education. In 2014, CARF opened the Al Salihat Academy High School for Girls in order to create long-lasting impacts not only for the students, but for the entire society. Currently, 280 students are enrolled at the school, and over 320 students have graduated so far and continued their education at dentistry, medical, pharmacy, law, science, and other schools. While giving much-needed attention to the next generation through the schools, CARF could not neglect the pressing needs of today for many women trying to support their families. In 2011, CARF called to establish income-generating training programs to skill widows in order to be self-dependent. As this initiative grew, it led to a key partnership in 2022 with the Lady Fatima Charitable Trust to open the first of its kind factory in Karbala called Man, focusing on empowering widows and women in general. Currently, hundreds of widows benefit from this initiative. 
In the fall of 2019, it was determined that the Ansari Hat Academy needed a library. This was expressed to our generous donors and they gladly supported. In spring of 2019, the library was completed. In 2017, CARF started another grassroots project to empower the community. That is, to support undergraduate, talented students in getting a degree by providing interest-free student loans. So far, dozens of orphan and low-income students, mostly female, have benefited from this program. Dozens have graduated as physicians, pharmacists, dentists, medical assistants, engineers, and other professions. Currently, 18 students are benefiting from this program. In 2017, CARF asked supporters to donate toward helping underserved people to receive free or discounted services in the Imam al hujja Hospital. In 2018, we started to deliver such services. CARF urged people to donate for supplying patients' beds in the Imam al hujja Hospital in 2022 in the name of loved ones. In the same year, we have delivered on this need with the support of our donors. In order to provide holistic support to widowed and orphaned families, CARF promised to establish interest-free microloans to those struggling to make ends meet. In 2019, with the generous help of CPOS Foundation, we established Saki Karbala microloans. CARF collects pledges annually to distribute food baskets and urges people to donate for this cause. For the last 20 years, the result was phenomenal. Millions of food baskets distributed to the needy people. In 2017, CARF promised and delivered on establishing a new chapter in the holy city of Nejef to serve those in need in that region. In 2021, CARF set out to establish a Masharik junior high with a few students who had graduated from Ansadik school. Now more than 40 students attend, most of them orphans. Ali Muhammad. Respected brothers and sisters, Samah Sayyid, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Taqabbal Allah a'malakum. May Allah accept all your fasts, your duas, and a'mal, insha'Allah. These nights and especially tonight insha'Allah as we approach the night of destiny the 23rd night of the holy month of Ramadan the pinnacle of the month insha'Allah may Allah insha'Allah accept our amal that we have done so far insha'Allah um, for the, the the ones that are going to come tonight insha'Allah as we start with the amal of destiny insha'Allah the night of destiny Laylatul Qadr. I would like to begin with a surah al-fatiha for those that have Insha'Allah, sponsored tonight's iftar. Um, there's a long list of, of families that have contributed tonight. So for their marhumin, please let's recite a surah fatiha, insha'Allah, and send it uh, to their um, uh, to their deceased ones. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much to our generous sponsors throughout these last five nights for the iftars. I would like to give a couple thank yous as we are approaching the final night of our amazing majlis in the month of Ramadan. I know five nights has flown by and we're reaching the end of the holy month, but tonight is the, mo one, the most important one of the nights. So inshallah, we'll make the best of it and uh, do it together inshallah. What an experience it was over these last five nights. I want to start by thanking our generous donors, whether the ones that sponsored our iftars or the ones that came and showed up during the fundraising nights over the last uh, two nights. 
Inshallah, God accepts all these efforts that you have given. I know you've done your best and you've given what you can. And inshallah, this will show and you'll see the product and the fruits of your labor, inshallah, with uh, the activities of this group and this community, inshallah, and what we can offer to you, inshallah, throughout the year as we approach Muharram. But before that, inshallah, as we do continuously have Friday night programs and inshallah celebrations, whether it's Mawalid, Eid al Ghadir, inshallah, we have a lot of plans for this summer. So we thank you so much for giving us the ability to, inshallah, provide more programming throughout the year. To our donors, Jazakumullah khaira and thank you because you are the fuel that keeps this engine running. To our reciters, whether the Latmiya reciters, Mullah Mustafa Jum'a, Mullah Mustafa Abdul Nabi, and Mullah Mustafa Al Hasnawi, thank you so much for joining us. And um, uh, Abu Fatima, of course, as well. Habibi Abu Fatima, thank you so much for joining us um, and uh, enlightening us with your beautiful eulogies and making us cry for our master, Amir al Mu'mineen, to our a'mal and dua reciters, the ones that have joined us uh, the last couple of nights. Some of them are, are, are the youth, all of the youth, and alhamdulillah, are partaking in these a'mal. We thank you all for joining us and uh, lighting uh, the, the lantern of a'mal, inshallah. And we continue to encourage our youth to participate, and especially uh, tonight as well. To our volunteers, the kitchen crew, set up and clean up, uh, the cooks that have cooked the iftar some of the nights, uh, the AV team upstairs, the multimedia team that are on the cameras around you and on social media on a daily basis. Thank you so much for your hard work. None of this happens without the team behind the scenes. Ramadan, I think, is a lot harder to have volunteers for than Muharram. And I do not take that for granted whatsoever. People are fasting. People have their schooling and, uh, and work. And alhamdulillah, there's volunteers that are showing up early, early, early to come and make sure this place is ready. They are tired, they're fasting, they're staying late, um, they're getting two to three hours of sleep and going to work and school the next day. So may Allah accept it, and I know God is seeing all of this, but as a community, it is on, as it's our, at the top of our list and priority to thank them for the hours they are putting in, um, especially uh, the youngsters that are helping on a daily basis. So may Allah bless the volunteers of MYM, and uh, inshallah, Allah uh, will continue to, to bless you in your lives and all your endeavors, inshallah, because MYM is nothing without you all. Uh, to Samahat al Sayyid Hussein al Ghazwini, thank you for joining us these last five nights. It's an honor to have you in this town. This is your home, of course, and this community loves you. And inshallah, we continue to have you in the future as you enlighten us with your amazing lectures and your, your na'i and inshallah, the aza of Amir al Mu'mineen. Inshallah, we continually have you, Samahat Sayyid, and we thank you for blessing us and honoring us with your presence. And of course, to the Az Zahra community for sharing Samahat Sayyid with us as well, so we can inshallah benefit from him as much as possible. Those are all the thank yous I have. I know there's a lot of people and I could go name by name, but we'll be here all night and we have a long night, inshallah, of uh, uh, a'mal and as well, of course, schooling is tomorrow. It's a work day tomorrow, so we do not want to go too late into the night, so inshallah, I'll end it there. If you have donated or pledged and you have a donation that you have not been able or had a chance to give the donation, Brother Hassan will be at the back of the hall. You can approach him, inshallah, and he can uh, accept any forms of payment to accept your pledges, inshallah. Tonight we're going to begin with the amal right after the lecture, so we will not be having a break. So if you would like uh, to go have your wudu now, this is probably your best chance. Um, but inshallah, we're going to begin with the Raf al Masahif right after the lecture. So, no break whatsoever. We're going to hand out the Qara'een during the lecture, um, and then as well as Ziyara, and then we can take a break after that. Inshallah, at the end of the night, we will have Suhoor as well. Inshallah, served to you before we end off the night. Inshallah, and anyone who would like to stay behind and who, who is able, we are cleaning up the center as well. So, we'll do that later in the night around 2 a.m., inshallah. Thank you so much, everyone, for your patience. Inshallah, we'll begin with the main event of tonight. The lecture for tonight is the beauty of worship. Please help me in welcoming Samahat to Sayyid Hussein al Ghazwini with three loud salawats. Ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And if the brothers can come as forward as possible.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Before I begin I'd like to take a minute to thank all of the dear brothers and sisters for attending the past five nights. I'd like to thank the dedicated organizers of this event. I saw how hard they worked, those who cooked, those who cleaned, those who washed the dishes, those who would come early in the morning. There are some that would come at seven in the morning, 10 in the morning, to come and clean and prepare and cook and prepare our iftar. May Allah bless you. Jazakumullah khair al jaza. أجركم على أبي عبد الله الحسين صلوات الله وسلامه عليه. My gratitude and my sincere wishes to the wonderful youth of the MYM for putting such a fantastic event together. I thank those who came from long distances. We know you had other options. We know you had other majalis to attend, but you chose to come here to this majlis. May Allah bless you. We thank you. Inshallah, you continue your support to this wonderful organization. Wa sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Yaqulu Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam, inna qawman abadu allaha tama'an fi jannatih wa tilka ibadatu tujjar. There are some who worship Allah azza wa jal out of interest in his heaven. They'd like to enter heaven. That's why they worship. And this is the worship of businessmen, traders. And there are some that worship Allah out of hellfire, fear of hellfire, so that Allah does not throw them in hell on the day of judgment. This is the worship of slaves, the worship of cowards. And there are some that worship Allah out of gratitude. Out of gratitude to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has given them. And this is the worship of free men and women. And Amir al-Mu'neen, he himself would say, Ilahi, ma abadtuka heena abadtuk, khawfan min narik, wala tama'an fi jannatik, walakin wajadtuka ahlan lil'ibadati fa'abadtuk. Oh Allah, when I worshipped you, I did not worship you out of interest in your heaven, nor out of fear of your hell, but I found you worthy of being worshipped. Because you're worthy of being worshipped. Because you are you, and I am I, and hence, I worship you, O oh Allah. A worship that is based upon gratitude, a worship based upon love, a, wor a worship based upon knowing that Allah is being is worthy of being worshipped. Not out of interest in heaven. That's a plus. That's a bonus. Not because we don't enter hellfire. That's also a plus. 
That's, a, that's also a bonus. But because Allah is worthy of being worshipped. He's given us so much. He deserves our gratitude and hence we worship Him. There are many of us, my dear friends, we don't love worship. We do it because it's a chore. It's like washing the dishes, vacuuming the house, doing your laundry, cleaning the house, and you pray. It's on the list where you tick the boxes of things that you have to do on a daily schedule. And part of it is that you pray. It's a chore. It's a duty. It's, what's, it's a responsibility that we just want to get rid of. That is not what is meant of ibadah. Ibadah is meant to be loved, meant to be adorned. We have to love our ibadah, enjoy it, feel fulfilled, feel fulmil, fulfillment when we pray. For some of us, no, when we get up for salah, we get up lazily. We only do it because we have to. If we didn't have to pray, we wouldn't pray. If we didn't have to fast, we wouldn't fast. Allah says, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا kusala." We stand lazily to pray. Some of us, we have to be dragged for salah. We have to be told five times, six times, seven times that you have to pray. Don't forget your salah. Don't forget. While salah is meant to be enjoyable, we should enjoy it. We should look forward to salah. The same way that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi would look forward to salah. He would anticipate the timings of salah. He would tell Bilal, at the time of Adhan, he wouldn't tell him, say the Adhan. He would say, Arahna ya Bilal. Bring us comfort. Because the call to Salah, the Adhan, brings comfort. We're about to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speak to him. Rasulullah says, Afdalu nas man ashiq al-ibadah fa'anaqaha wa ahabbaha biqalbihi wa basharaha bijasadih. The best of you are those who love their worship. They embrace their worship. They come to their worship wholeheartedly. Not because they have to. Not because if they miss their salah, there's hellfire. There's a punishment. There, or they'll miss out on heaven. No, because they feel the need for salah. They feel the need. And they enjoy it. Salah ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. A major part of worship my dear brothers and sisters and my dear friends, is understanding and knowing Allah Azza wa Jal. Worship that is based on knowledge, that is based on understanding. Worship without knowledge is empty. It's an empty form of worship. It means nothing. It's meaningless. Otherwise, khawarij, the khawarij, those who killed Amir al-Mu'mineen, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam was a khariji. He prayed and he would fast and he would pray salat al layl but he killed the imam of his time because that is what worship without knowledge, that's what it does. It's empty. It's meaningless. It does nothing. It's absolutely meaningless. Otherwise, on the day of Ashura, on the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein alayhi salam stood to lead salah with his companions Umar ibn Sa'd, who was leading the army to kill Imam Hussein, also led salah. He also prayed. The murderers of Imam Hussein also prayed. They prayed jama'ah on the day of Ashura for the thawab, for receiving reward. They didn't pray individually. They prayed jama'ah. But what, what is the meaning of this worship that gets you to kill the only living grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It was meaningless. Al-Hurr ibn Yazid al-Riyahi who stopped Imam Hussein السلام, from reaching Karbala, from reaching Kufa, and he got him to come to Karbala, he also prayed. And his army prayed. And in fact, they prayed behind Imam Hussein السلام. Yet that army stood to fight Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. Muawiyah would pray. Yazid would also pray. But this prayer is meaningless. Worship has to have knowledge, understanding. Know who you're worshiping. Know who you're praying to. Know who you're asking. That makes it a lot meaningful when you turn towards Allah Azza wa Jal and you ask Him by knowing Him. By knowing Him. Even the ziyar of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We know that the ziyar of Imam Hussein for every step that we take towards Karbala to visit Imam Hussein, there is a hajj and there is a umrah, the reward of walking the steps to Imam Hussein. There is a hajj and a reward with one condition. Manzar al-Hussein, عارفا بحقه. You know who he is. 
knowing who he is. There are some, I see them, they come to the shrine of Imam Hussein, they shout, they cry, but they don't know who Imam Hussein was. Their ziyarah is empty. It's empty of knowledge. The hadith says, لا خير في عبادة ليس فيها تفقه. There's no use of worship that is empty and has no knowledge. It has no understanding. It has no ma'rifah. This is one. Worship also requires certainty. That your heart is full of certainty, full of faith, full, full of yaqeen. Full of yaqeen. That when you stand and worship Allah Azza wa Jal, be certain that He can hear you. And that He is watching you. And that He is recording what He is saying. And that He will answer you. And that He will answer you. If not now, tomorrow, the next day, a year from now, your dua is answered. Your salah is answered. Be certain of this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, لا عبادة إلا بيقين. Have certainty. Don't come towards ibadah with doubt, with a, with a heart full of doubts. Being doubtful of Allah and Allah's mercy and Allah's merciful. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam would say, نَوْمٌ عَلَىٰ يَقِينٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ صَلَاةٍ فِي شَكْ Sleep with certainty. Sleep and don't pray. Of course, not the ob obligatory prayers, the recommended prayers. But you have certainty of Allah and His power and His mercy and His knowledge. It's better than worship and salah. But you're, you're doubtful. You doubt Allah's power. You doubt Allah's mercy. You doubt Allah's wisdom. So this is important. Now what is, what is the essence of worship? Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Surely we created humans and jinn to worship. Did Allah only create us to pray and fast and give sadaqah and that's it? What is the purpose? What is the ultimate purpose? Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The purpose of ibadah is to make us good people, good citizens, righteous people, pious people. Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Our salah, our worship. How can we tell if my how can I tell if my worship is effective or not effective? There's a very simple trial. See, does it forbid you from committing sins or does it forbid you? Are you still committing sins with your salah? Or you're not. If you stopped, that means your salah is effective. Your salah is effective. But if you're committing sins right at the same time when you're praying and worshiping, then your salah is ineffective. Because Allah says, Inna salata tanha anil wal -munkar. Our salah is meant to give us immunity and get us to refrain from sinning. And the same goes for fasting. For fasting, if our fasting does not get us closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, to stop us from sinning, then the only thing we benefited from fasting is that we lost a couple of kilograms. We lost a couple of pounds, if at all, if we lost anything. We lost a, some weight. That's it. يَا يُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting has been prescribed upon us so that we may show piety. So that, so that our... Worship is translated into actions, into deeds, into behavior. That is the purpose. That is the purpose of ibadah. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, Rubba mutanassik wala deena lah. Some are worshippers. They pray, they fast, they recite Quran, but they have no faith. They have no religion whatsoever. You see them with the masbaha all the time. And they have the appearance of someone religious. But they're far from religion. They have nothing to do with religion. Because their worship is empty. It's not translated to behavior. It's not translated to akhlaq. It's not translated into actions. An Abi Abdullah Listen to this hadith. He tells us what's the guideline of knowing who's religious and who's, and who's not religious. Let's say you're a father now. And someone has come to propose to your daughter. And you don't know a lot about this young man. Is he religious? Is he not religious? Or you have a young son and you're looking for a wife for your young son and you don't know which of the young girls is religious, who's not religious. Look at what the hadith 
of Imam Sadiq says, he gives us a guideline of what is true religi religiosity and what is true worship. He says, لا تختروا بصلاتهم وبصيامهم. Do not be fooled by someone's extra acts of worship, his fasting, his prayers. There are some, when you see them, they pray. They're, you know, you, you remember Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam. From their du'as and their prayers, they're excellent. And their worship, they're excellent. The Imam says, don't be fooled by their salah and their fast. فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ رَبَّمَا رَبَّمَا لَهِجَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالصَّوْمِ حَتَّى لَوْ تَرَكَهُ اسْتَوْحَشْ There are some that can't stop praying and fasting. They can't stop praying and fasting because they're used to it. It's become a habit. A few nights ago, actually last night, at Masjid, Masjid Zahra in Richmond, we spoke about habits in Islam. Some people are in the habit of praying. It's not because they're religious. It's not out of fear of Allah or piety or righteousness that they pray. No, it's become a habit. Or they have the habit of fasting in the month of Ramadan. I know some people, they don't pray, but they fast in Ramadan because it's a habit. It's a beautiful feeling. It's the month of Ramadan. That's not religiosity. That's not being religious. For some, if they don't fast and they don't pray, they feel awkward. Ramadan, I don't fast. The intention is not because of the sake of Allah. No, because everyone else is fasting, their friends, it's the cool thing to do. Right? This is not religiosity. You know, as a joke, they say someone didn't fast, but he has suhoor. He has suhoor, but he doesn't fast. They told him, you don't fast, but you have suhoor. He said, yes, I mean, I don't fast, and you don't want, to have, you don't want me to have suhoor as well? Do you want me to be a kafir all of a sudden? I mean, no iftar and no suhoor. For some, this is not, this is, this is religion itself. This is not religion. This is not religiosity. This is the true test of religion. Not just acts of worship. Yes, acts of worship are required in Islam. But true religiosity is shown in your speech. How honest are you? How trustworthy are you? Are you? I come and I trust you with $5,000 and I tell you, give it back in a month. Will I receive $5,000? Or I won't receive $5,000? How honest are you? How trustworthy are you? This is a real sign of religiosity. This is a true sign of religion. If our ibadah, our psalm and salah translates into honesty and trustworthy, then our ibadah is great. It's accepted and it's meaningful. But... If we pray and we fast and we hold the longest prayers, but I'm not trustworthy, I'm not honest, no one can rely on me, then my ibadah is meaningless. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, for some, we feel that my ibadah is not effective. How come I pray and I fast, but it, it's not taking a toll on me? I'm still the same person. It's, it's, I'm still... I have the same behavior, same akhlaq, same attitude. My ibadah is not changing me. It's not changing my akhlaq. It's not changing my routine. It's not changing my habits. How come when we read about the ibadah of Amir al muminin Al-Imam Al-Hassan, Al-Imam Zayn Al-Abidin, their ibadah, their acts of worship were effective, but my acts of worship are not effective. How come? Well, one reason could be summarized and what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states. Look at the difference between our acts of worship and the acts of worship of the imams. This is the difference. Rasulullah says, اعبدوا الله كأنك تراح فإن لم تكن تراح فإنه يراك Worship Allah as if you can see him. And if you don't see him, but he sees you. Imagine if there's an elder in the community, your father, a respected elder in the community is sitting with you and you're with your group of friends, how would you behave? Would you extend your feet? Would you la laugh out loud? Would you smoke a cigarette? Would you do anything inappropriate? You wouldn't because there's an elder watching you. There's an elder watching you out of respect, out of, you know, this respect for this elder, you would watch out for your behavior. This is how we should pray. Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. This is the form of worship that we'd have. That we should have, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And if we can't see Him, He is seeing us. He is seeing us. طيب. In Islam, 
the 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 meaning of worship is very broad. When you when you hear the word worship, what comes to mind? Salah, dua, fasting, sadaqa, hajj, umrah. This is the meaning of worship. This is the immediate image of worship that comes to our mind is salah and, and fasting, salah and psalm. However, Ahlul Bayt have taught us that worship in Islam is a lot more vast. It's a lot broader. There's a, a larger meaning to the word worship. For example, thinking of the creation of the skies, creation of the heavens, how did all of this come to being? All of this creation, the skies, the earth, the mountains, the rivers, this beautiful nature here in Vancouver, you have beautiful nature. These beautiful waterfalls that you have, how did they come together to think over Allah's creation and to think over Allah's greatness as a form of worship? Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, At-tafakkuru fi malakut as-samawati wal-ard ibadatul mukhlaseen. The worship of, of the sincere, to think of Allah's Creation. The Quran also says, "الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ." Those who remember Allah while standing, while seated, while lying down, and they say, "Oh Allah, glory to you for for creating these skies, the earth, the mountains. All of this you did not create it in vain." Those who ponder, those who think. Thinking about Allah's favors and gifts. This is a form of worship. To think, to count your blessings, to count what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you and given you in your life. This is an act of worship. Seeking halal sustenance, halal rizq is a form of worship. In the Mi'raj of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi when he ascended to the sky, he was told by Allah in a hadith Qudsi, Ya Ahmad, Al-Ibadatu Asharatu Ajza. Worship has ten sections. Tis'atum minha talabul halal. Nine of the ten sections, talabul halal, to work, to, to bring food to your family, to make an income, to make a living, going after your living. This is... An act of worship, that eight to five job that you have, that you dread, that you have to wake up in the morning and you hate, that's an act of worship. That is making you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> because you're providing for yourself and you're providing for your family members. Saying salam and speaking gently pe to people is an act of worship. Amir al-Mumineen alayhi salam says, إِنَّ مِنَ الْعِبَادَةِ لِينُ الْكَلَامِ وَإِفْشَاءُ السَّلَامِ Looking at your parents with love, with affection, not by mad dogging them, not by looking at them angrily like most of us do and speaking to them sharply and without respect. No, looking at them with love, with sympathy, with affection is a form of ibadah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, نَظَرُ الْوَلَدِ إِلَىٰ وَالِدَيْهِ حُبًّا لَهُمَا عِبَادَةً Just looking at your parents with love, with affection, Making them feel good, this is an act of worship. One of the greatest forms of worship is the love of Ahlul Bayt. Imam Sadiq salam says, Muhammad wa Muhammad. Looking at a scholar is a form of ibadah. Imam Sadiq salam says, النظر إلى العالم ibadah. Looking at a brother you love for the sake of Allah. Brother meaning a brother in Islam. Not necessarily, not necessarily a biological brother. Looking at a brother in faith, at a sister in faith for the sake of Allah, with affection, with love, is a form of worship. النظر والنظر إلى أخ توده في الله عز وجل ibadah. طيب. One of the best forms of worship, also we learn from Ahlul Bayt and the Ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, is silence. Silence. You know, we love to talk. 
We are all experts in talking, being the center of attention, talking. Sometimes exercising silence is a virtue. Silence is a form of ibadah. We don't always have to talk. There are some people, whatever sort of discussion is happening, they have to say something. If it's in politics, they become political commentators. If it's philosophy, they become philosophers. If it's something related to economics, they become economic analysts. If it's on religion, alhamdulillah, everyone becomes a alim and a faqih and they give their fatwa. No, sometimes exercise silence. Sometimes silence is wisdom. Something that if they give in their two cents, that's wisdom. No, sometimes silence is wisdom. Al Imam Sadiq says, Ma ubid Allah bi shayin afdal min as There's no better form of worship than silence. Silence. Practice silence. We don't always have to speak. And another hadith, لَيْسَ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْعِبَادَةِ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنَ الصَّمْتِ مِنَ الصَّمْتِ This is a hadith Qudsi. That there's no greater worship than silence. Be silent. Exercise silence. At work, at school, at home. This is a way to avoid sins. This is a, a way to avoid disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal. طيب. Another thing is, there are some people that always look for a new form of ibadah. They say, Sayyid, we've tried everything. We want something new, something exotic. We've tried salah and fasting and dua. We've read Mufatih al Jinan from cover to cover. Dua Abu Hamza, Dua Imam al Hussein, Yom Arafah, Dua Kumail, Dua Sabah. We've done all of these recommended prayers and recommended acts. Teach us something exotic, something new, something fulfilling. A worship that is fulfilling. I'll tell you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, and Amir al-Mu'mineen tells us, the best form of worship, the most exotic form of worship that gets us closer to Allah azza wa jal is the five daily prayers. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, لا عبادة كأداء الفرائض There's no better worship than the five daily prayers. Why do we take them lightly? It's very... Astonishing, we have the five daily prayers and we look for a new form of worship, an exotic form of worship. Have we done, have we performed the five daily prayers? Have we done justice to them? Pray them on time with the mustahabbat, with the adhan, with the iqamah, with all of the mustahabbat? Have we done them? Have we done justice to them? No, we don't. We rush in our salah, we don't pray on time, we don't even concentrate in our salah, and we look for something new, something exotic. There's nothing more exotic than the five daily prayers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, اعمل بفرائض الله تكن من أتق الناس. Perform the obligations of Allah, and especially the five daily prayers, you will be the most pious of all individuals. You don't have to look for anything exotic, anything new. طيب. Also, there is worship that is unacceptable. Some of us, our worship is unacceptable. Which, which worship is unacceptable? If we have some of people's rights, if we have hurt certain individuals, taken their money and we haven't returned it, we've taken some loans and we haven't returned it, or we had a fallout with a business partner, and I come to the masjid and I pray and I fast, thinking that my ibadah is ex accepted. No, it's not accepted. When you have violated people's rights, you've hurt certain people, and you expect, you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your ibadah, your sustenance is haram. You've taken people's wealth and money, and you've built a wealth for yourself, and you expect your ibadah, to be accepted, no. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, Al-ibadatu ma'a akli al-haram kalbina'i ala al-raml wa qila ala al-ma' Imagine someone who builds a huge building over sand. Sand, in the middle of the desert. Sand, without a foundation. What do you think of this building? Can it last? No, because the foundation is weak. The foundation is weak. He who worships but has eaten people's rights, has violated people's rights, has taken people's money, has taken loans from this person, that person, everyone in the community, they're asking him for money, but he doesn't. And yet, he comes to the masjid, and on Laylatul Qad, 
and he does his a'mal and he even does the hundred rak'ah, but he hasn't, he's violated people's rights. This, this worship has no value whatsoever. He's building upon sand or upon water. طيب. The hadith also tell us, don't, for your, don't force yourself in worship. Worship is great. Worship is amazing. But don't for yourself, force yourself. Of course, which worship? The recommended, not the obligatory. The obligatory, it's, it's a must. It's an obligation. But when it comes to recommended salah, recommended fasting, recommended a'mal, don't force yourself because it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. Tonight is Laylatul al-Qadr. There are some that will have a, a tick box, a check box. Raf al-Masahib, tick. Uh, Dua Abu Hamza take, and they will go through all of the a'mal as if there's a race, there's a marathon. They have to, they just want to finish all of the a'mal before fajr. This, while this is good, but it's not a race. It's not about quantity. It's not about the quantity of your a'mal. It's also about the quality. For the brothers who go to gym, you could go for five hours and you could go for one hour. And sometimes that one hour in the gym might be more useful and beneficial than the five hours, depending on what you do. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality of your deeds. It's about the quality of your dua and a'mal. Sometimes a five-minute, five-minute dua, but concentration with Allah Azza wa Jal. No one disrupt. No one disrupts you. You don't allow anyone to disrupt you, and you speak freely to Allah for five minutes, for ten minutes. Sometimes it's more valuable than one hour of a marathon of du'as and prayers and our mind is somewhere else. And maybe perhaps we're even texting at the same moment. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, خُذُوا مِنَ الْعِبَادَةِ مَا تُطِيقُونَ Take from worship that which you can handle. Don't burden yourself. Sometimes you can't. Don't burden yourself. You will hate it. You will come to hate worship if you're burdening yourself. You're carrying yourself more than you can handle. And Imam Sadiq salam says, لا تكره إلى أنفسكم العبادة. Don't make yourself hate worship. Take worship that which you can. Of course, I'm speaking about the recommended worship, not the wajib. Wajib is wajib. Wajib, we have no choice but to perform our wajibat. But for the recommended, don't force yourself. Ibadah is meant to be enjoyable. Enjoy your salah. Enjoy dua Abu Hamza. In a few moments when we recite dua, enjoy it. Try to participate with your tongue and with your mind. Connect with the dua. Try to understand. Live the moment. These are precious moments. These are very precious moments. This night will pass. Are we going to be alive next year? Will we depart? How many people were with us last year in the month of Ramadan? And this year they're in another life. They've gone to the next world. I can count at least 10 15 that I know that departed us in the last year. Are we going to be here for the next Ramadan? We don't know. Will we have this opportunity again to be alive for next Ramadan, the month of fasting, the month of dua? We don't know. Let's make use of it. Tonight is Laylatul Qadr, my dear brothers and sisters. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Tonight is a night of dua. It's a night of worship. It's a night of connecting with Allah. Leave your friends. Leave your friends for a couple of moments. Make sure that tonight, the night does not end if you haven't spoken intimately with Allah. One on one. Not just through dua Joshan al-Kabir and dua Abu Hamza. No, no, speak in your own language. In whichever way you know. It doesn't have to be in Arabic. It doesn't have to be in a specific way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all of our languages. We can all ask and Allah will hear all of us and Allah can have an intimate discussion with each and every single one of us. You don't have hajat? You don't have special desires? Tonight is the night. Tonight we create our destinies by asking. Tonight ask Allah SWT. Ask for things that matter, my dear brothers and sisters. Not for things that are that don't matter. Ask for success in dunya. Ask that you remain on the path of Ahlul Bayt. Pray for your children. Pray for your parents. Pray for your loved ones.
Pray for others. Don't be greedy when it comes to dua. Allah is generous. Don't just pray for yourself and no one else. Pray for others in your life and Allah will give you that which you prayed for others as well. Because Allah is, the, Allah is generous. Allah is all giving. We have a lot of a'mal tonight. I don't want to take too much of your time. Amongst the a'mal tonight is the ziyar of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. How blessed is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. That we remember him in every occasion. We remember him in every occasion. Mid Sha'ban, we remember Imam Hussein. In the month of Ramadan, we remember. On Laylatul Qadr, we remember him. On Ashura, so that's his day. On Arba'een, that's his day. On the day of Eid, we remember Imam Hussein alayhi salam. In Mid Rajab, we remember throughout the year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be connected to Imam Hussein. For him to be with us at good times and bad times. And to always be connected to his tragedy. So that the tragedy of Imam Hussein remains in the hearts and minds of this ummah. To remember that if, if it wasn't for Imam Hussein, we would not be fasting. We would not be praying. And it's thanks to him. He died for our salah, our fasting, our faith, our iman. That is why we never forget Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We owe it to him. It was because of his noble blood that today we sit and we remember Allah and we pray and we prepare for Laylatul Qadr. Now let's come, before we begin our a'mal, let's shed a few tears for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show mercy upon us. On the day of Ashura, when all of the companions enter into the battle, one by one, one by one. You know, when you take a gift when you take a bouquet of flowers to a friend who has just left the hospital or has come from a trip you take a bouquet of flowers but you put the nicest flower on top it stands out Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura he offered all of his flowers everything that he had he offered he gave all of his companions, his sons, for the sake of Allah. But there was one missing, one flower missing. A six-month-old flower was missing. Abdullah al radi And Imam Hussein alayhi salam goes to his tent. His sister Zainab, she brings the, the infant to him. She, tells, she says, Akhi Aba Abdullah, take your child. He's dying from thirst. Ask for some water for this child. He's dying. Imam Hussein puts down his armor, his sword, and he goes to the enemies, asking for some water for this child. Oh people, if I have wronged you, if I had committed a sin, what sin has this child committed? They huddle around each other. Some said, let's give him water. Others said, don't give him water. There was commotion. Umar ibn Sa'ad looks to Harmala. He says, Ya Harmala, iqta' niza' al qawm. Oh Harmala, end the discussion. Meaning kill, make a kill. Harmala says, Al Walid am al Walid. Who? The father or the son? Umar ibn Sa'ad says, Ya Harmala, ama tara bayad an ahr al tif. Do you not see the white neck of the infant? Imam Hussein alayhi salam was carrying the infant. The infant was sleeping, was, had fainted because of thirst. All of a sudden, a arrow comes and pierces the neck of the child entering from one side and coming out the from the other. The child took out his hands from his cloth and he started shaking as if telling his father, Oh father, you brought me to quench my thirst. Look at what they did to me. Imam Hussein put his hands underneath the neck of Abdullah. He filled his hands with blood and he threw it to, it to the sky. سال وترس شفه 
من وريدا يا دبل السما وللقاع ما اخر امام حسين threw the blood to the sky and not a drop of blood returned to the earth imam hussein faint heard a faint voice telling him da'u ya hussein fa inna lahu murda'atan fi jannah leave him ya hussein he will have a wet nurse in heaven imam hussein comes back to the tent his, his daughter Sukaina comes, Abba, Abba, where is my brother Abdullah? Did you quench his thirst? Is there any water remaining? Imam Hussein takes out his son Abdullah, gives it to his daughter Sukaina. بسهم العدا مذبوح جبته شنه الذنب خويا عملته والماي حاضر ما شربته they brought the infant to his mother رباب imagine what 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 happened to رباب when she saw her infant عبد الله in a state like this. يا بني يا بني يا بني يا عبد الله يا غالي أنا برباك ساهرت الليالي أنا هزن بالمهد والمهد خالي لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. This is the time of du'a, brothers and sisters. Now that your tears have streamed, this is the time of du'a. Prepare the qara'een in front of you. Open the qara'een. And we will recite du'a رفع المصاحف together. إني أسألك if you'd like turn towards the قبلة. Turn towards the Qibla. Allahumma inni as'aluka bi kitabika al-munzal wa ma fih wa fih ismuka al-akbar wa asma'uka al-husna وما يخاف ويرجى أن تجعلني من عتقائك من النار. Ask for your حاجات. اطلبوا حوائجكم. Don't forget the Imam of your time. Now put the copies of the Qur'an on your head. Allahumma bihaqqi hadha al-Qur'an wa bihaqqi man arsaltahu bih wa bihaqqi kulli mu'minin madahtahu fiih wa bihaqqika alayhim fala ahada a'rafu bihaqqika mink Now ten times Bika ya Allah بك يا الله 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 إلهنا بمحمد 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 صلى الله عليه وآله إلهنا بعلي 
بعلي بعلي بعلي بعلي بعلي بعلي بعلي بعلي بعلي عليه السلام إلهنا بفاطمة 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 عليها السلام إلهنا بالحسن 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 عليه السلام إلهنا بالحسين 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 عليه السلام إلهنا بعلي بن الحسين بعلي ابن الحسين بعلي ابن الحسين بعلي ابن الحسين بعلي ابن الحسين عليه عليهم السلام إلهنا بمحمد بن علي 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 عليهم السلام إلهنا بجعفر بن محمد 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 عليهم السلام إلهنا بموسى بن جعفر 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 عليهم السلام إلهنا بعلي بن موسى 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 عليه السلام إلهنا بمحمد بن علي 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 لمحمد بن علي عليهم السلام إلهنا بعلي بن محمد 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 عليهم السلام 
إلهنا بالحسن بن علي 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 عليهم السلام إلهنا بالحجة 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 عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تدع